So the next car on the list is this Ford. What is this? Expedition? All right, so the next car on the list is a Ford Expedition. It's getting a cool new Android Auto Apple CarPlay Kenwood radio on the dash. A couple things about this car. For one, it doesn't have sync. Yay! But it does have a factory overhead built into it, as well as it came with the factory navigation system. We're going to be able to retain the audio from the overhead only because the video doesn't come forward. It stays back here. The plan is to retain the audio into the front radio. Now, this is where it gets tricky. There's also an auxiliary up front. The Kenwood radio we're going with doesn't have both. It only has one input. We're going to have to get kind of creative on this one that allow us to have the audio from the back and have the auxiliary input. We might change things around a little bit. We're not sure yet because I don't know if we really need the auxiliary input up front. We might just put a USB there instead. Kind of still on the fence on that one. But let's take a look at the parts we're going to be using to do the install. We'll be using the RP4 FD11. This will allow us to retain the steering wheel controls and the rear seat entertainment. Now if you have sync, it's not going to allow you to do sync, but you can go and bypass those sync things like the aux jack and if it has a USB so that you can retain those as well. So the first thing you want to do when you unbox this harness is go ahead and set up the steering wheel controls and that is going to be on page number three down here on the bottom. We're going to do a Kenwood, so we're going to switch it to number three. And now you're asking what Kenwood are we going to do? Well for this one, we're going to go ahead and do the 9904S in the dash. We're going to be using the BK FMK. 542 for a dash kit. This does have the rear seat entertainment, so we'll be integrating that in because this harness will allow the rear seat entertainment to play. Now, this little guy here, this is the steering wheel control harness, and on it there's two. There's the eighth inch, which is for like Pioneer and everyone else, and then there's this blue yellow. That's right, blue yellow. We talked about this before. This is actually for the Kenwood. This is also for JVC because believe it or not, they're the same company. Now we'll go ahead and plug this in so we don't lose it. Let's go ahead and take this harness into the car and see what we're going to use and what we're not going to use. To pull this radio, you have to pry this panel. So carefully grab your panel tool, pry it, two clips in here, and the bottom piece come out. And then after that, you start prying the whole, the whole kit. Go easy, and the whole kit comes out. So we've come up with a plan. This is where the factory aux, this guy here, is normally at. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drill it out to fit the USB DMA1, which is a USB jack. So we're gonna put the USB jack right here in this jack here. What that's gonna do is that's gonna free up that input on the back of the radio. We don't need to plug aux into that now, because on this Kenwood, let me show you the back. This guy right here is the AV input. There's only one, even though it has this here, that's for the iData link. This is for the mic. This is for video out. This is the only AV input on the back of the radio. These RCAs are for cameras, these are for audio, these are the USBs. So what this will free us up to do is just feed in the rear seat entertainment, RCA, this guy right here, rear seat entertainment, into that AV jack. And we are gonna need an eighth inch to RCA, one of these guys here, so that we can do that. This has just an aux jack with some RCAs on it. And then we'll be able to plug it into that, and that way they're gonna get the DVD sound into the auxiliary. You get the idea, hopefully. That's the course we're going to take to make all that function the way it's supposed to. Now what we need to do is Fernando's in the car right now getting the GPS antenna and the microphone and all that fun stuff mounted. We're going to get over here and build the dash kit real quick and get this harness all taken care of. When we plug the harness into the car, the only thing we're really not going to be using is there's only one subwoofer RCA that we needed. So we went ahead and removed the second one so it's just not dangling. We're not going to use the aux wires here, but we're not going to remove them mainly because if they ever decide they want to go back to it they can and it's really not going to take up that much more room so we'll leave that in there for now also let's get going these are the brackets for this okay there's a lot of brackets on here depending on what you're going to do your best bet is just grab the factory radio and just kind of match up to see which ones you're going to need in this case it's just going to be these front guys right here these that means we're going to have to break off the rest of these to do that, I like to use these. These are duckbill pliers. They just have a flat head on them. And of course, the flush cutters come in in the end and do a really nice job. And these will just snap into place. 
Grab the bag of screws that came with your Kenwood because it has the fine thread screws in it. Go ahead and line it up and screw it in. All right, as always, check the gapping on the top and bottom of the radio. Make sure it's nice and straight. Go ahead and set this aside for right now. Got it. There you go. That's it. So we have our harness all pretty up and more organized. What we went ahead and did is we took our eight speaker wires and we put them all by themselves. They're not part of this harness because there's a lot of wires in here and this, this just makes this particular one a little bit easier. Just for FYI, white driver's front, gray passenger front, green driver's rear, purple passenger rear. The black stripe is negative on all of them. Now we have this bundle here, which is a bunch of stuff going on. We have an orange white, which is illumination. We have a blue, which is an amplified antenna. We have have a blue white which is the amplifier turn on we have a yellow which is memory we have a red which is accessory now that's always something you want to check in this case the red accessory is a one amp output so we're not doing anything with it but we could not power a backup camera if we wanted to unless we were to add a relay which we're not doing in this one so we're not going to black is ground now then you have the three favorite wires which is the red white the green and the purple white there again over here talks about though the red white is a parking brake we're not gonna be using that. We'll go ahead and cap that off. The green is reverse and the purple white is vehicle speed set. Now, like we said, we're not doing a backup camera on this particular one, so we don't necessarily need to hook that one up to anything. That makes it make a little bit more sense. So now what we wanna do is go ahead and pull over our Kenwood harness. We'll take a look at that real quick. So we have a black that's gonna match that black ground. We have the yellow that'll match up, the red that'll match up. We have a blue and a blue white, so those will all match up over here the orange white match up we have the blue yellow that's gonna come over here and go to the blue yellow on the steering wheel control interface then we have our eight speaker wires and the purple white purple white is reversed this purple white is going to go to this green now we've talked about it before if you want to you can always cut this down here and add the purple white in we've done a ton of different ways that's up to you then there's these two wires that are hanging off this is a green with a white and a green with a red that's a cam plus and minus these are for the Kenwood specific DSP camera. We're not using that, so we're just gonna go ahead and tape these off. And of course you have the light green wire, which is the emergency brake. We're gonna go ahead and unlock the menus with this. So we'll attach the light green to the black wire. Now what we wanna do is go ahead and get these all wired up. Now a good habit to get is anytime you're doing something silly like this, where like the green and the purple need to go together, do that first. The reason why is because a lot of the times this kind of becomes autopilot, meaning you just start doing, you've done it a million times or you've done it 10 times you've done it or you've never done it and you don't want to have to think about it after the fact always do the strange wires first The harness is done. How it's broken up is we have the car side here. We have the plug that's gonna go into the radio. We have our subwoofer RCA here. We've gone ahead and added the aux output to the rear seat entertainment so it'll plug into the back of the radio. So we're all set. The one thing we're gonna need to do is reprogram the steering wheel controls because they are not set for what we want, which is like VR, voice recognition. So what we're gonna do is on page four, we're gonna go to Kenwood right here and we'll go ahead and set that up. So we'll take these into the car so we'll have them so let's join fernando in the car mm -hmm. all right so let's see what we got here volume up volume down source truck up truck down that's it hmm. yeah very limited what is this that's not that's not the media yeah. On the Fords, they have very few buttons. In this case, they only have like five. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, it's our media button here. We'll go ahead and program the media button for VR. Go ahead and turn the car on. Climb up. Climb up. Climb down. Climb down. Use source. Play. Track up. Track up. Track down. Track down. Disc. Disc. Answer. All right, so that should be programmed. We'll test that first once we get this thing plugged in. Let's go ahead and start plugging this thing in. What's the weather like today? It's currently. Why am I? 
So the steering wheel controls work the way we hoped they would. Now, what we did is we, you know, he got he got this in, so that's good there. And the back of this Kenwood, it hangs down eh, maybe eight inches. And then of course this is about eight inches too. So we're going to just directly plug in. We're not gonna add in the extra footage because he is going to be doing Android Auto. And Android Auto is very picky when it comes to the footage of the cable. All right, so now we're gonna test everything again, just make sure it works. I just got noise. Are you playing? Okay, the movie's playing. Yeah, I got no sound. This is when the day goes bad. Let me make sure this cable works. Oh, the cable works. So here's the problem that we've ran into, is that the output of the Ford, the left and right RCA, is individually grounded. And when you put them into an aux jack like this, it automatically shares the ground, which is fine until you plug it into the radio. It doesn't like it. It looks at it as a short, which automatically shuts off the output of the factory DVD player. To fix that, an SNI-1 ground loop isolator We'll separate the grounds and prevent that from happening. You can plug it right in and it'll work. <laughs> yeah, right? All right, let's do one final test. Let's get this thing out of here. The reason why we ran into this is because it was the Kenwood, the Kenwood using the aux input as their AV. Pioneer actually uses their AV input as a dedicated AV. It has a red, yellow, white input. We wouldn't have had that issue. We've, we've never ran into this one before. If you're doing one of these, you run into the issue, well, get a ground loop isolator and you'll be back in business. Now what we wanna do is set up the presets here, the, the top three, Sirius XM is one of them. We definitely don't want Sirius XM as one. Go ahead and move over Bluetooth audio. That's probably gonna be more popular. Go ahead and hit eject, make sure the door opens. Clear is good. Do one final test with the USB just to make sure it is on target. USB's logging in, we're good there. All right, well, this one's done. I'm gonna go ahead and get all my tools out of the floor here and we can get this car out of here. In the situations like that with the expedition work, it's like there's no reason why it shouldn't have worked. The instructions were clear, it plugged in, and it just, it wasn't working. So that's where having a drawer full of tools and knowing how to use them allows us to troubleshoot situations like that and try to move these installs along. In this case, we used the PAA3 just to make sure there was signal coming out of that. You could have done that with a voltmeter set to AC just to see if there was sound coming out by hitting play and pause on the DVD player, making sure that there is actually sound coming from the movie. And then, where the PA3 though really set it apart was once you plugged in the aux jack to the radio and it did that clipping little thing where it, it literally did that, that noise we were getting from the speakers. That might be a little hard to see with just a voltmeter set to AC. It might have showed up because it would have gone from a variable signal to just a straight mm, at least we knew we were on the right path like there wasn't anything wrong with the car and we knew there was something it was the radio we tried different aux jacks it's also a good place to start is if change your cable see if it's the cable if another cable does the exact same thing chances are good it's not the cable the next step would have been to try a different radio that is pretty much the last resort because most of the time it's not the radio it's usually something else and in this case it was it was the grounding that the aux jack was was doing that was causing us the issue so every now and then you run into these little problems honestly it's what makes the day interesting because sometimes it just becomes like mind numbing like we were talking about when i was saying to solder the two wires that are different together first so you don't have to think about it anymore but stuff stuff like this is is fun because it's like ooh, we have an issue and we have to figure it out that makes the day interesting plus now we know that if we're doing a kenwood and it's a aux jack input that we need that noise filter it's all good all right guys this was fun it's gone thankfully so on to the next one. And there is a next one. It's five o'clock special time. That's right, it's that time of the day. Or, well, it's not five o'clock. We call it a five o'clock special. Basically what you get is an inexpensive amplifier. In this case, a Planet Audio amplifier. Now the amplifier has to be able to take an eight gauge power kit. In this case, we're gonna use the Stinger Select, or in this case, SoundQuest 100% copper eight gauge kit. And then it's two Comp 12s usually. Uh, that's the yellow one. It's at a discount price. I don't know what he sells it for. All I know is we put them in. It's not as common as it used to be. Most people are, are, are buying nicer equipment. I mean, this is a 
Challenger RT with an Alpine system in it, but you don't want to come off nothing to put the stereo in here. Now, because it is an RT with the Alpine system, an Amp Pro would be ideal, but that would cost more than probably the whole stereo we're putting in. What we want to do is we need to tap into the driver's front mid bass speaker. This is the speaker we need to tap into because this is actually the subwoofer. The rear deck speakers do play a certain amount of bass, but it's not anything compared to the bass that comes out of the door. When you're doing the Alpine system, System. If it doesn't have the subwoofer in the rear deck, which most of them don't, make sure you tap the door speakers. Let's get into a base knob. Amplifier is going to get mounted in the trunk. Fernando's working on making a custom mount for that right now. Nothing elaborate. These are straight up turn and burns. It's just a base install as far as that goes. Now keep in mind, we, we don't actually cut back on any of the quality of work we do that's that's not going to happen at all because i wouldn't do it otherwise so i mean but this is we got to get this thing done as quick as possible because the profit margin is thin but whatever okay let's get going so what we've done is gone ahead and removed this whole side of the car here remove the back panel here so that we have a clear shot for the high level low level feed as well as the base knob because this has the alpine system it has a factory amplifier that factory amplifier is located right here black heat sink looking thing this this guy down on the bottom are the two harnesses which are those guys right there so now what we want to do is find out which is this guy here and the other side over there so for that we're going to use the tp9a because we want to do combination tone generation and polarity test we're going to use our handheld polarity tester so once this starts ticking, we'll be able to just go right to the door. So there's two plugs here. There's the big white plug here and the little black plug here. The little black plug is the one that has the door speakers in it. So we'll go ahead and turn this on. And it's ticking. And we're getting a green. That's what we want to see. We'll come over here and we'll look at the plug and where we have our red in is yellow gray so we have yellow gray is positive and yellow purple will be negative now more than likely we'll have the same for the other door let's go ahead and probe two more and on the plug the next ones are a green set not a gray set so we're going to have a green yellow and a green purple now more than likely the green yellow is positive and the green purple is negative but we'll go ahead and test it anyways because nothing sucks like getting it wrong at the end all right there we go so in this case, there's a gray yellow and a green yellow, and both of those are gonna be positive. So we'll go ahead and tap both those. We'll feed them into our high level to low level. Now we are using the LP7-2 or dot two pack audio high level to low level adapter because it has the auto turn on. There is a accessory turn on located in the trunk at the fuse holder. So if you come into the trunk, this, this fuse right here, this is the power outlet fuse. If you notice, there's this open hole here. The middle one is a common, and then on one side is constant 12 volts, and on the other side is accessory. Depending on which way you set this up, you'll be able to use that to turn on the amplifier if you want. The only downside to that is the amp is going to be on all the time, regardless. In this case, when the audio shuts off, the amp will shut off. It'll act more like a true remote turn on. So we're going to go ahead and use that. Alright, let's go ahead and tap the wires. Fernando is almost finished up with his mount. Do you have the mount in? Let's take a look at the mount. Just went ahead and mounted a ABS square right here. That'll allow us to mount the amp to it. The wires are gonna come this way across the back so that they can get to the battery. And then we'll run the signal and base knob that way. This guy is done. Now that is definitely the prettiest looking wiring job for a Planet Audio. We have the two comp subs. And of course the base knob is mounted right there. No, no install would be complete without listening to it and seeing how it sounds. So let's take a listen, shall we? Even if you're trying to do a cheap system in one of these, I suggest getting an Amp Pro. This has what's called bass roll off. Bass roll off, for those of you that don't know, is what AccuBase on an audio control processor is trying to fix. As the volume goes up, the subwoofer doesn't move up in parallel with the volume. 
it actually starts to drop off. In this car, you is the best example of that. As you're turning up the volume, you can actually hear the bass stop coming out. It's, it's kind of amusing. Even if you're not gonna do a big badass system or anything like that, you just wanna add a subwoofer, get yourself an amp pro from PAC. You'll, you'll thank yourself for it later. Your sanity, no, there's no price for that. All right, guys, as you can see, it's dark out, fun. This day is done. I'd like to say on to the next one, but the next one will be tomorrow. So you guys have a great night. We'll see you later, bye.